Now, let's clarify the main types of whey protein so you know what you're seeing when you pick a container of whey protein up. First of all, whey protein is the liquid part that remains from milk when it has been curdled and strained. So whey protein is not even really a supplement, but a direct byproduct taken directly from milk, in my opinion. Whey protein concentrate contains anywhere from 89 to 25% protein, depending on the brand you select. They have varying amounts of lactose and fat, so for that, and those that are lactose intolerant, it's important to be careful. The second type of whey is whey protein isolate. It is made up of at least 90% protein. It's basically whey protein concentrate that has been further processed to remove lactose and fat. Typical whey isolate will be very high in protein with less calories, fats, and carbs. The third type of whey protein by definition in this video is whey protein hydrolysate, and it has been highly processed to break down into amino acids quicker for absorption. Its fast absorption allows fast digestion and makes it popular for those who resistance train and athletes alike. Isolate generally costs less and tastes better in comparison. However, hydrolysized whey is a superior in digesting faster in theory. At the end of the day, it's hard to know exactly how crucial that is, as overall protein is most key. To my protein-loving listeners, if you're new, please subscribe, or if you're returning, turn on notifications. Leave comments and let us know if this is the kind of content that you're looking for or what else we can provide for you. Now that we've covered types of protein, I would like to give specific recommendations on brands of protein and give you information on what is contained in them. They are all high quality and budget friendly options. None of these are sponsors of the channel. I will cover the benefits to all as well as any negatives. Finding a high quality whey protein shake is hard enough with all the options out there. I hope to point you in a direction that will work best for you and your needs. Stick around for all four. The second one is my personal favorite. My first recommendation is Gold Standard Whey Protein, which is the gold standard for a reason. It has a unique blend of whey isolate, concentrate, and hydrolyzed whey, offering a unique blend from what the brand markets as hormone-free cows. It has these three different types of whey protein and over five grams of branched-chain amino acids per serving. It's an affordable, high-protein source with plenty of flavor options, 17 total, last I checked. As an added bonus, it's also relatively low in carbs, Gold Standard Whey Protein by Optimum Nutrition truly offers a good protein source to fuel your muscles at an affordable price. It's about $1.10 to $1.60 per, soup, or per scoop, depending, offering 24 grams of protein. From personal experience, I can tell you that chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry are all delicious on their own. Vanilla is particularly good and can be added to many other flavors as a good mixin'. It does come with some thickeners and sucralose as an artificial sweetener as many budget-friendly options for protein do for taste and texture. However, when tested by independent labs, it passed without showing a high level of heavy metals and other contaminants. The second option I would recommend is NutriCost Protein, which is probably my favorite value and high-quality whey protein concentrate. It's the protein I currently use. It offers a high-quality protein without having to pay top dollar, coming in under a dollar a scoop. It offers 25 grams of protein per scoop and comes in five flavors. I get the unflavored one so I can add it to anything. The best part is the unflavored only contains one ingredient, whey protein concentrate. The 25 grams is perfect to repair muscles and help with muscle protein synthesis. Another giant plus for a budget-friendly protein like this is it's third-party tested, meaning what you see on the label is what you're getting. The third option I would recommend is IsoPure Protein, which offers a whey protein isolate option that has low to no carbs, depending on the option you pick. This option costs more than the first two products discussed. However, it offers a great protein, low calorie, low carb option to help those who want high quality isolate protein at a reasonable price. Many protein shakes have fairly low calories, but IsoPure is even lower, coming in at 110 calories. Beyond the low calories, it also packs a punch with 25 micronutrients. It basically functions as a multivitamin in addition to a protein shake. It has on average about 30% of vitamins A, B, C, E, K, biotin, magnesium, and zinc, to name a few. It even has more calcium than your average protein scoop. While many proteins combine concentrate, hydrolysized, and isolate isopure, isopure sticks with just the isolate to keep protein high calories and carbs low and serves a multivitamin. The only negative is it does have xanthan gum for thickening, some ambiguous sweeteners, and, and sucralose as well, as, as many of them do. While it will cost a little more than some proteins like Gold Standard and NutriCost, 
it is reasonable for, your, for a pure isolate option. My fourth and final option is Fairlife Core Protein, which is delicious and creamy, very tasty, comes in either 26 or 42 grams per serving. This is a pre-made protein shake and I added it to the list for convenience. It has all nine essential amino acids, is lactose free and ready to drink and aid in your recovery. It is low in sugar and high in taste and really has the ideal texture. The vanilla flavor in particular tastes like milk and creamy vanilla ice cream just all in one. It does come with artificial sweeteners like sucralose, which again a lot of these have, as far and also as well it has a sulfame, um, potassium, and stevia extract. So while it does not have actual sugar, it has quite a few sweetening and different sweeteners in it that could possibly upset your stomach if you're already sensitive. Moving on, I will now cover some details as to protein sources and what to look for. Not all protein is created equally, nor is it absorbed by your body in the same way. There is a system to rate how protein should be scored and how it can be best used by your body. Protein quality is actually a measured index variable that gives you a score for a point of reference. A widely recognized scale is called the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score. It's a long name, but actually pretty simple. The first thing it measures is how well proteins are absorbed and digested in your bloodstream. It also measures what portion of that protein is functional in your body versus what is just burned up and used as energy. When protein digests, they are amino acids broken up in your body. Sometimes, depending on the protein source, these can have a lot of one amino acid and less of another, depending on which ones we need, but different amounts. For example, you could have 20 of one amino acid and one of the other, and it could not be the right amount your body needs. For example, chipotle tortillas may have 10 grams of protein, but your body may only be able to use or anabolize three grams or so. Therefore, it's important to have a high quality protein as some low quality proteins will not have the amino acids needed to carry out vital functions in your body and repair muscles. Finding a complete protein source is key. In summary, the effectiveness in protein comes down to two things. How well a protein digests and absorbs, and second, does the amino content match what your body needs? Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Share with your protein-loving friends. As always, we thank you for watching. Moving along with the scale, the protein scale is on a 0 to 100 or 0 to 1 scale, with 1 being the highest end. Egg and milk proteins would be at the top as best options. They digest and are absorbed, giving your body exactly what it needs. Eggs and whey protein would be examples and will be used to support muscle building in the body. This is why I spent so much time covering whey protein and different types to try. It's really a part of a healthy, high protein diet. Other proteins can range from, part, from partial utilization and usage all the way down to not very effective at all. For example, beef gets over a 90. Beans like chickpeas and black beans are about 75. Again, it's on a scale of one to, or zero to one or 100. Peanuts and rice are all the way down at about 50, which is not super effective on their own as a protein source. Many other proteins have been tested and you can look them up. I'll leave a chart below that you can also look for reference as well. I would aim to get at least half of your protein from sources scoring 90% or higher. Again, always aim for one gram per pound of body weight. Get as much as you can ideally in that range. If you're vegan, vegetarian, high quality sources can be a little more difficult. Many options could be below 50%. However, you can combine sources. For example, beans and rice together give an ideal complete amino acid blend. Another alternative is soy protein concentrate or isolate, which is cheap and pretty high quality. Make sure to enjoy some delicious protein and subscribe for more health and fitness advice content. Remember, maintaining a high protein diet overall is the most important thing. While proteins have different qualities, try to keep them above 90% for the threshold and have a clean whey protein source to help. If you maintain this, you'll be able to keep lean muscle. As always, we're trying to bring practical fitness advice to everyday people.